I've been waiting for this opportunity since the NAMM show back in January. It's now July and the wait is over. Yamaha has recently gotten together with Steve Gadd and collectively they've produced a line of some of the best sounding snare drums I've ever played. If you've been checking these snare drums out online, if you've heard about them and you're thinking about picking one up, this is the video you need to see because I'm going to tell you all about them. So grab yourself a cold beverage and your favorite set of headphones and check out for 2016, the new Yamaha Recording Custom Snare Drums. So there are seven new snares in the new recording custom lineup. I got four of them here. The ones I don't have are the two other brass ones. So there's a 13, six and a half. There's a 14, five and a half. And I don't have the 14, six and a half aluminum. But I think I got enough here to um, give you a good idea of what you might want in one of these. All of the shells are represented still. So the aluminum, the stainless steel and the brass. So um, we're gonna pick these apart individually, tell you a little bit about um, each one of them, show you the features on these things, and um, you know, give you a good idea of what to expect when you go to check one of these out. So each one of the snares that you heard off the top playing example, as we're kind of morphing through each one, they were all recorded straight out of the box with the stock head on them, no EQ, and it took me about a minute to tune them right out of the bag. Because I wanted to give you guys the most accurate representation of what to expect straight out of the box. If you're curious as to how I ended up tuning these snares, some of you guys might be familiar already with my tuning, my snare tuning 
uh, tutorial. If you're not, as soon as you finish watching this video, just go over to my playlist. I got a tuning playlist with all three of my uh, tuning videos on there. Check out the snare one and you'll see exactly how I tuned each one of these. I'm not kidding, man. It took less than a minute. Straight out of the bag, right onto the stand, and I just started playing. So I'm gonna give you my impression on each one of these snares individually, but before I get into that, let me just show you the common features that you're gonna find on all of these snares. Now, first of all, where do you get the brass or the aluminum or the stainless steel? All the shells are the same thickness. They're all 1.2 millimeters thick. They all have the new Q strainer here, which is actually pretty slick, nice and hefty. Um, two things I noticed about this strainer, number one, they have this cutout here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but they have a cutout there. Most of us drummers, right-handed drummers anyway, we have our throw-off on the hi-hat side. The cutout there makes it real easy to slip your thumb in there and adjust that, that, um, that snare wire tension. The other thing I noticed is that <clears throat> this tension knob here even in the on position, it's pretty smooth and, uh, and pretty easy to turn. So if you, if you need to dial in your snare height, you want less snares, more snares between songs, it's really simple to do here. Hefty looking sort of C type attachment for the butt end on the other side. Um, that's pretty cool. They also have on each one of these, the new high tension lugs on these, the, the new weighted, I guess they, they added a little bit more weight to this particular one. So <clears throat> it just provides for, you know, a more secure tuning, I guess. The other thing I did notice too, and, and one thing that you're gonna wanna see for yourself, is when you're, uh, when you're turning these, these tension rods, I don't know what it is that they have inside here, but you can feel that there's something just kind of grabbing onto it. Just give you an extra sense of security that they're not gonna come loose on you. So there's, there's something in there, I don't know if it's a piece of rubber or something, but when you're turning these, you can feel that it's gonna be nice and secure. One of the features that they're also um, pointing out on this new design is the bead. The bead on the shell, um, I guess on, on previous Yamaha um, metal snare drums, the bead was on the inside of the shell. It was curved in. On these ones, they're curved out. I tend to sort of be a little skeptical about small details like that, but you know, they say it results in a more open sounding shell. I honestly can't say one way or the other. All I can tell you is that these snares sound really nice and wide open. So whether the bead has a little bit to do with it, who knows, but whatever they're doing, it seems to work. They're all gonna come straight out of the box with remote coated ambassador on top, ambassador snare side on the bottom. And another cool thing I like about all of these is that they're all, aside from, I'm assuming the 13, six and a half, but these are all 10 lug snares. Great, I was always a big fan of 10 lug snares. I just like the tuning range you can get on a 10 lug, um, especially on uh, the five and a half shells. So those are the common features on all of these. Let's get into the individual ones. So since I already have it here in front of me, let's start with the 14 five and a half stainless steel. Now, <clears throat> stainless steel snare drums to me have always been like you know, the plain, unglazed, old-fashioned donut to me. You know what I mean? Like, I never really got too excited about stainless steel snare drums. They're just kind of blah to me. Um, there's nothing really special about that metal in particular. Um, so I wasn't expecting too much when I put this one on the stand. And then I, just, I tuned it up and just started playing it. And I noticed right away, man, that you get a really nice crack. You get a good amount of body out of this stainless steel. You guys that are in rock bands, um, 
you know, even some of you pop dudes out there. <clears throat> it's probably going to be a, a cool one to look at for you. It seems to be a lot more low mids to highs that I'm hearing out of this particular one here. Um, same with the 14.7 I got back here. I guess the only difference you're going to find between these two is the much broader tuning range. But the, all the characteristics are the same between these two. Um, this one seems to me more suited for stage. You know, if I was going to direct this somewhere, I would sell this as a really good live snare. Um, so yeah, that stainless steel one, check that one out. The, uh, the 147, which is sitting behind me here, I'll get into that individually as well, but the characteristics are all the same between the two of them. But I'll let you know what I liked about this one uh, once we get to it. This is the 14 five and a half aluminum. Ridiculously light. I'm thinking 80% of the weight of this snare is the hardware on it. I'm thinking if you took all the hardware off, took the hoops, the, um, the lugs, the strainer, everything, you could probably take this shell and just twirl it on your finger like this, like it's that light. That being said, I really, really like this one. Um, I heard this one on another video sample and for whatever reason, it just really stood out to me. So I was excited about getting this one in the house. Um, 10 lug again. This, the aluminum model is the only model that's gonna come with die cast hoops. I don't know if you knew that, but um, this is the only model that's gonna come with die cast hoops. And I'm assuming it's just to add a little bit more body to the super light shell. This is the woodiest sounding metal shell I've ever heard. Like, um, it, it might be the only snare that I could recommend um, for indoor gigs. It would be fine for indoor gigs, situations where the kit won't be mic'd, small rooms. Like typically you don't want to bring a, a metal shell inside of a small room. This one, you'd probably be just fine with it. This reminds me a lot of uh, Birch, to be honest with you. If you heard from the sample up top, if you had headphones on, um, you might have noticed that there's, there's a full range coming out of this little shell. So, you know, much like Birchwood, it's, it's like naturally EQ'd. You get an equal amount of lows, equal amount of mids, and an equal amount of highs. So it's a very controlled snare, like it doesn't rip your head off while you're playing it. Just really nice body, super nice crack. Like I said, it's the woodiest sounding metal shell that I've played in a long time. So, um, incidentally, you get... 20 strand snare wires on the thinner shell. So the five and a halves, you get 20 strand snare wires. On the thicker, or the, the bigger shells, six and a half and the seven, you get 25 strand snare wires. So everybody in the room was thinking that day. So anyways, man, don't let the weight of this thing fool you. It's almost, it's light as a feather but it projects like crazy. The thing just sounds great while you're playing it. So check that out. I'm assuming if this one sounds this cool, the six and a half is just gonna sound fantastic, especially when you put it in sort of that low mid range, you want something a little deeper and fatter. Take a look at the aluminum, man. The aluminum one is great. Brass. I've always had a soft spot right here for brass shell snare drums. There's just a, there's a fullness and a body and a crack and a presence that you get from a brass shell that you just can't get out of any other shell. As soon as I hit this thing, my insides lit up. Seriously, this is a, one of the best sounding brass shells I've heard in a very long time. As soon as I tuned this thing up, man, and started playing it, I could feel the full spectrum of that frequency range on there, man. Um, you could just tell there's, there's something about it that makes it stand out 
from uh, from the other ones. It's probably far too much horsepower for any kind of you know unmiked indoor situation. But you country drummers out there, man, you rock drummers, summer outdoor festivals, big stages. There's no other choice, man. There's no other choice. Brass is the way to go. And this new 14 six and a half recording custom one, man, they did something right. Cause this thing sounds great. 25 strand snare wires on this thing. Um, it's very sensitive too. So if you're doing stuff like press rolls and, and things like that, like if you're, if you're one of those ghost note type players, they're all really gonna come out nicely on this. It's very, very sensitive, this thing. But when you lay into it, man, that backbeat, it's just gonna, it's gonna rip your head off in the nicest way possible. Let me talk to my rock drummers for a sec. 14 by seven, stainless steel. Um, I think the aluminum one is the one I was most looking forward to trying out. But this one is the one that I was most curious about. Because when I saw a picture of this thing on the NAMM show, um, it just looked monstrous. So I was really looking forward to, uh, to checking this one out. 25 strand snares as well. Um, it's about as sensitive as, as the brass one. The tuning range is really cool on this. So if you're looking for something really big and fat sounding that's still going to cut through a wall of guitars, this is definitely one to, uh, to check out. I'm thinking it would sound great in the studio. I don't, I didn't notice as much of the, as the, the much lower end frequencies as you do with the brass one, but everything else is, is there. Um, it's definitely present volume wise. There's still a nice range that you get out of this one. And, and you can totally mess with the tuning. On the playing example that I had off the top, it was probably a little bit more in the mid range, probably closer to the higher end of the mid range that I had it when I was playing it there. If I dropped it a half turn, you know, it just would have sounded huge. So I would advise that you use some kind of muffling if you're going to drop the tune a little bit, because when you, once you start lowering it, it's going to start to ring out way more on you. And, you know, you don't want all that sort of St. Anger type annoying ring happening while you're playing. So, you know, put a thicker head on this one. Not too much thicker, but just something that's going to take a little bit of the ring away or slap a drum tack or a moon gel on top just to take some of that, uh, some of those overtones out. But the body and the presence of this 14.7 sounds great. Like it's, I had a lot of fun playing this particular one. I've never owned a snare this size before, like this deep. Um, I don't know if I would buy it as your main snare. You could, if you wanted, but to me, it's just, it would be one of those tools that you would have in your arsenal for the perfect recording session. Or if you happen to get that gig with a really loud band, 14.7 is a cool, cool size, man. I had a lot, of, a lot of fun messing with this one. My favorite is still the brass one, but this one sounds really good. So included with the five and a half models only, as far as I know, they give you an extra set of snare wires. Now, 20s come installed on the thing, but you also get Steve's preferred configuration, which is the 10s. So this produces, you know, more of a, more of his signature type sound. Um, the benefit, I guess, of having less wires, number one, obviously cuts down on the, on the snare buzz, um, the, the sympathetic snare buzz that you get when you're hitting your toms or whatever. Um, but it also 
increases the tone because you hear more of the shell. So that's the whole point of uh, including these. So I got them. I'm curious. I'm sure you're curious. So let me go ahead and swap these out. This is the, um, the stainless steel one here. I'm going to swap these out and see what it sounds like. So yeah, man, I don't know how well that um, translated on camera, but I definitely heard a difference, um, especially in, on the back beats. I hear a lot more of the shell. There's definitely a, a reduction in, uh, in snare buzz. You know, even when I'm sitting here talking to you, it's not ringing as much. So that's, that's a cool thing. So you kind of hear the snares when you want to hear them. You know what I mean? Like if you're doing a roll or... You know, if you're hitting that backbeat, it's just the right amount of, uh, of snare that you're getting underneath there. So, there was enough of a difference for me to say I prefer the tens. If I were going to get one, I would probably right away just swap them out, put the tens on there, and, um, and I would be pretty happy. So, there you go, man. That's the lowdown on the new line of recording custom snare drums. Hopefully that gives you enough to go on, you know, if you're ready to go out and start uh, shopping for one. I tried to provide as much information as I could on these things so that you walk in there with a little bit of expectations. But, um, yeah, man, all these snares are great. You know, it's just a matter of whichever one might suit your gig the most. Every one of them will be flexible. You know, there's a broad enough tuning range. On, uh, on each one of these things. So leave a comment below, man. Let me know uh, which one of these snares you were digging the most. And yeah, hopefully the store that you go to will have enough stock that you can A, B a couple of them, try them out and, uh, and pick the one you want. So thanks for watching, man. See you in the next one. Peace.